Now, <clears throat> I'm going to switch here a little bit. And the question is, do people ever get sick from this? And the answer to that is yes, but it's very uncommon. And there are two uh, areas that we're going to just touch on. One is there's a uh, uh, cyanotoxins that were in the kidney dialysis fluid in uh, South America and the suspicion of neurologic degenerative diseases in areas that are not where we live. And then, of course, if it happens to you, it's, it's serious, and uh, we understand that. <clears throat> so this is a famous incident. People run across this, and so it, I think it's worth talking about. Uh, this happened in Brazil in 1996. Uh, there are 131 patients who were exposed to a dialysis fluid that had been contaminated with cyanobacteria toxins. And uh, after this exposure, 58% of these people died of acute liver failure. Now, the uh, toxins were at 20 times what's considered to be a safe level, and they had a three and a half hour exposure of this material intravenously. So uh, you can imagine that that's not the sort of thing that would typically happen to a human. Uh, there's one other uh, time that I've seen a report that where people were exposed to this, but it was recognized right away and dialysis stopped and nobody died. Uh, and now, uh, of course, people uh, test for this all the time. So that's not likely to happen. But it, it does show that there's no question that humans can get very sick and die from cyanotoxins. But this is the only time people have died from something like this. This is just a quick diagram for people to understand. In the dialysis machine, the patient's blood is pumped along and the machine fluid is pumped opposite in a space where there's a semi-permeable membrane because the patient's blood needs to get rid of the potassium. Uh, unfortunately, in this circumstance, uh, the toxins are shown as little stars here, can go through the semi-permeable membrane into the patient. And uh, that's uh, <clears throat> how this occurred. It, it's a, a very unfortunate event. And so if you get enough of this stuff uh, intravenously, it can kill you. So you know, they're very much uh, alerted to this sort of problem that's not likely to happen again. The second one we wanna to touch on that people talk about is this chronic neurologic diseases and other chronic uh, things. And this happens around where uh, cyanotoxins are growing uh, in underwater um, as they grow and get uh, uh, the sun shining on them, they produce these toxins that I've shown as little dragons here. And they also produce a, a protein or a, um, a, I'm sorry, a chemical that is like uh, an amino acid, but not that's referred to as uh, BAMA. And it, it gets incorporated into uh, proteins that are being made and uh, that can be co uh, collected in people's brains. And this has been seen in the brains of uh, people in Canada, uh, this is again along the shore and in Guam where everybody's near the shore that lives in Guam. And so with these chronic exposures and these can occur uh, here where the, 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 they've even seen it in people that don't live right near the water. So again, the, these, the, the, the toxins and these molecules get up, they get in a bubble, the wind blows them to distant people and they can breathe them in and then <clears throat> There's another concern about chronic cyanotoxin ingestion uh, as a cause of liver cancer in China and the Middle East. That's not here. And that's a phenomena where um, the little fish eat the, the teeny fish, and then the bigger fish eat them, and then the humans eat those fish, and you can get chronic uh, exposure to the toxins that way. And some people think that that may be a cause of chronic cancers. Uh, it's a little hard to know about these things because you don't get samples of these people ahead of time and then see what happens to them. Uh, particularly for the ones that cause neurologic disease, you're not gonna get multiple brain biopsies from somebody. So uh, you, we really don't know whether these are specific causes or they're just happen to happen to these people. There's probably some hereditary susceptibility for some of these diseases. Uh, and uh, it's not likely that anybody in upstate New York is going to get this, but you may read about it. And I think the concern is real and the biology is something that we uh, think about, but not likely to happen here. So I just put this slide in, you know, we really are talking about <clears throat> microcystin in, uh, here, but if you get enough of this 
material uh, ingested into uh, an individual, it can affect all the organs in your body because it can get into the bloodstream. One of the things that uh, happens is that it uh, interferes with the uh, uh, lining of the uh, tissues. And so in that way, it can affect any organs. There are specific neurotoxins that can affect the brain, uh, <clears throat> but uh, we're not gonna really touch any more on that today. And then we already talked about dogs. Mm -hmm.